about two months ago, I was going over all the sermons I had preached the last three years. And I came to this alarming conclusion. I had alluded to the love of God as a point of reference, but I had never in those three years preached an entire message about the love of God. And yet it is the love of God that it can be the anchor of our individual lives of all that we do. I came to Christ when I was eight years of age, the Brethren Church. It was a bald head missionary from India that preached that night. And my parents had stuffed me into the, the, the back of this, this tiny little car and we drove to church. Maybe there were about 25 at, the, at most there. And, and this man preached on John 3.16. That night I gave my heart to Christ. I realized for the first time that God loved me. John chapter 3 verse 16 summates what we believe and why we believe. For God, that's the beginning. Loved, so loved the world. Love is action. We sing many, many songs about love. <coughs> we say, I, and we say it glibly at times, I love you. But when God loves, it is always commensurate with action. God loves, he gave. It's the giving we discover the full meaning of love. God did not just love us with words. He declared his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What a demonstration of love. That's, that's why for me communion is such a meaningful moment. And we, we have a tendency to be so glib and just taking a little cracker and a little bit of grape juice and, and we get on with the service. But that's the very focal point of our faith. Jesus' primary command was that you were, were to break bread one with another. That was the word that, that spilled out of Paul's life. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Love, true love, is sacrificial. It's more than just verbiage. And how, how often we are very glib when we speak about love. I love you. Are you willing to lay your life down for me? Are we willing to lie, lay our lives down for others? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It, it's always a tragic moment in the life of a family where a child dies. The loss of a child tears at the, the human heart of the parents. The very thing that God loved and expressed his love through to a lost world was his son. And Jesus gladly embraced the cross. God loved. Our sin had to be dealt with. It's only when we experience full forgiveness of sin that we can have intimacy with God. It's not a warm, charismatic feeling. God chose to love. And it was that factor 
that brought men and women to himself through repentance and faith. And that's the good news. That whoever believes him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I've been saying this for quite a, quite a bit recently, is that we, 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 we have forgotten that the ramifications of the gospel. If, if, if we really lay hold of the gospel, that people are lost and that God has provided the way where their lostness can be redeemed so that they have eternal life. We would live pouring out our lives to reach the lonely, the disenfranchised, the wounded, the bruised, the alienated. For God so loved. It's not just the Sunday school text. We learn to go on to the next Sunday school class grade. It is paramount to what we believe. What is love? What is love? It's more than love is tender. What is love? Very interestingly, I, I, I was going through my wife's notes. She has boxes of her teaching and notes. She was Swiss and, and every letter is beautifully penned. I write in tongues. <laughs> and you've got to pray for the interpretation. And as I was sorting through the file, this piece of paper slipped onto the floor. And, and I was just meditating about the, the, the power of, of God's love. And, and this is what she had extracted from some of the literature, the books she had read, uh, namely Rick Warren, but others, and, and I thought, this is, this is incredible. What is love? And I quote from Rick Warren, busyness is a great enemy of relationships. We become preoccupied with making a living, doing our work, paying bills, and accomplishing goals as if these tasks with, with, a, with a point of life. They are not. And she underlines this. The point of life is learning to love. The point of love, of life, is learning to love. And I went. Because that was my wife. I would give her gifts, I'd give her money, and she'd always give it away. <laughs> and she, she said to me after one trip, I brought some jewelry for her. She said, I don't need any more jewelry. Came from Brazil, I, I, I came back with 35 pieces of, of garments, and clothes, dresses that had been given to me by these dear Korean Bra Brazilian um, believers. And she said, I don't need any more clothes. It, it wasn't about her. Her life was a life poured out in love. And above all, she loved the scripture. She loved not just in word, but in deed. She was not impressed by verbiage. It was a miracle that we survived our marriage. You missed that, well. <laughs> the point of life is learning to love God and people. And then she wrote this point. Life without love equals zero. If there's an absence of love in your life, in mine, no matter what we do, no matter what we give, it amounts to zero.
Love means giving up, yielding my preferences, my comforts, my goods, my security, money, energy, or time for the benefit of someone else. Love is action. Love is action. See, I have little to give. We all have something to give in the name of Christ. If I'm struggling with, with practical needs and somebody gives me a dissertation about the electronic uh, composition of, of what I, I, I'm longing, it do, doesn't help me. It's just information. I need more than just information about love. Love is that which is demonstrable, which, ex which uh, engages God's heart and, and, and is expressed to lost people and lonely people. Even in churches, there is a desperate need for love. We say we love one another. But love means washing dirty feet. It means bending low, doing the menial, not seeking recognition. Love is kind. Love is, 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 is grateful rather than complaining and murmuring and, and petulant. Love is kind. Love endures forever. Why? Because true love it embraces God, the life of God, which Michel alluded to in terms of by the Spirit. It is the Spirit of God that sheds abroad in your heart and mind what? The love of God. That's supernatural. It's an experience. It's a tangible experience. It's just not a, an intellectual ascent to the fact that God is a God of love. It is an experience and God wants us to taste and to know the love of God, which Paul says passes all understanding. <clears throat> Interesting when Paul notes the fruit of the Spirit. The first fruit is love. And the next fruit is what? Joy. If there's an absence of joy, I suggest there's an absence of love. But when God's love fills your heart, what's ancillary to that? It's joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. See, that's God at work. We can know as Christians the reality of the presence of the Lord. So There's so much of a spirit of atheism today in America and around the world. But when you have an encounter with the love of God, it's real. It's not psychological. It's from the heart of God. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Paul says, the greatest of these is love. Jesus says, if I have faith that can move mountains but have not love, I gain love nothing. Paul, Paul says that. If I, that's, that's, that's kind of radical if we say, okay, Pull a line or he just cast you into the ocean. You would say, wow, how did you do that? We would be impressed with such power, wouldn't we? But Paul says without love, it doesn't mean a thing. We're just moving dirt. We spend a lot of time moving dirt, trying to impress the saints or whoever, but love. Love is, is God's point of reference. If I have nothing, if I, if, if, if I do not have love, I have nothing. The 
Do I have to ask my question? Do I need more of God's love in my life? See, God conquers our hearts. What does he conquer our hearts with? His love. When I was seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit as a boy, we'd moved from Wellington to Auckland, New Zealand. And I, I went to uh, different churches. I, you know, I just looking for a place to worship. My parents were struggling in their marriage and I had to take a ferry across the Auckland Harbour to, to visit some of the churches and it was amazing how few churches reached out their hands towards this young teenager that was seeking a house to worship God in. And then I went to a brethren to, to the Assembly God Church. There was this big Tongan Howley guy. He worked on the walls. And when I came and he put out his, his pudgy hand, strong. And, and he, he, he turned my hand into mincemeat. <laughs> well, God bless you, brother. God bless you. And I what what drew me back to that church was not the preaching, although it was excellent preaching. It was this dear brother at the door that reached his hand out to a young teenager who was seeking a place to land. The love of Christ literally flowed from his heart to everyone he met. When people meet you, when they meet me, what's their impression? personality. Well, I can get away with personality. I understand that. But personality doesn't win people to Jesus. It's the love of Christ. That's why Paul says, love of Christ constrains me. There's something very tangible about that. This church had free worship, good worship, radical worship for those days. But, and there was a time when people could pray or, or testify. And there was always this lady. She, she was this little old lady. She had hair, she had a beard on her chin. And, and she, she had an old coat that had come off the ark when, when they were <laughs> this and, 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 and you know, you could smell her 25 yards away. And I, I, that just irritated me. And, and she had a high falsetto voice. And every time she, I think, I, I said, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh, I didn't appreciate that. And, and I was a bit judgmental. I was proud. I, I wanted a particular type of Christian. Well, a few months later, they had a crusade, the Evangelist Crusade. The Evangelist asked for those that needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come forward. I prayed, I fasted, nothing had happened. So I go up the front with a whole bunch of people. And my sister also, Fiona Prattney, she, she was with me through. And um, I would say, oh God, fill me with your spirit. And I was pleading and, oh, oh, it was painful. It was like giving birth to a baby. And, and, and the, the evangelist said to me, just relax. He touched my head. And then I, the next thing, heaven literally enveloped me. The peace of God, the joy of God, the love of God. And, and I believe that in the spirit there can be an acceleration in our thinking. A lot of things seem to fit like, like a, a, a computer with, with the, all the elements that are being configured. 
And isn't it interesting, at that moment I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I thought of this dear woman that I'd been so judgmental about. And I had a love for her that transcended any human love. I loved her. Being filled with the Spirit is, is not a sign of, of position in the body of Christ. It's a grace of God given that we might effectively share the love of Christ with those around us that are desperately in need of a Savior. With this I close, there's so much more I could say, but I'm in power. What does love require? Action. Love is more than a word. I woke up this morning early and that was in my spirit. Love is more than a word. We can be very verbose, but love is action. For God so loved the world. Why is that important? Because there's no other way to express the love of God than by His Spirit. 1 John 4, 7 and 8. John says, Beloved, let us one love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows of God. This is the criteria of whether you're born again. It's the fruit you, pres you, you produce. He says this, when you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, what's the fruit of your life, of mine? It's to love. Because we have a knowledge and understanding of the Lord. Since I have retired from being senior pastor, I'm spending more time with unbelievers than ever before in my life. There are people out there today in Kona that are hungry for God and they're not quite sure what they're searching for. People say, well, what, what are you there for? I mean, that's not a Christian activity. No, it's not. But you've got to be where the fish are. You've got to be where the sinners are. Jesus said go. He didn't say come to the church. We're to go as, as we go, as we help people. Think miracles happen. My favorite cathedral in the world is Costco. <laughs> There are so many people that you can engage there. And it's not a game. People want reality. We have our cliche form of Christianity, four or five or three hundred points to lead people to Jesus. When you're filled with the love of God, God gives you wisdom and insight. And I believe that God wants to do something with the church in Kona. We've got to get on the same page. And there's only one page to get on. It's Jesus. When people come to Jesus, He expresses to them the love of the Father. Love one another. Why? For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. What a privilege we have to walk with God. Isn't it? Amen. Throw out the cliches. Just be who you are. You know, we, we you, Christmas Eve, for example, we decided to ask people in our street that have not... 
and barely been in our home over the years. We had non-Christians at, at, at Christmas Eve. And I had one man weeping. He said, thank you so much for inviting us. There are so many lovely people in this place. And we have the ministry of reconciliation, the ministry of love. A smile touched by God's love can cause broken hearts to be open and healed. You think I'm preaching? I am. I, I feel it so passionately within me. And so my prayer is that for each of us we'll say, come Holy Spirit and pour God's love into my heart. That's what Romans chapter 4 is all about. He's talking about tribulation and knowing tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character, hope. And then he says, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to me. That's amazing. God pouring his love into your heart and, and in mine. We say, Lord, I'm weak. And the Lord says, I know that, but I'm strong. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. And when you're full of God, it'll be an overflow. What will I say? Boy, you'd be amazed how a godly hug can reaffirm the love of Christ, the love of God in people's lives. Reaching out a smile, a touch, a handshake, a gift. Don't love just in words. I'm, I'm guilty there. The Lord says, what are you willing to do? You first of all, pick up your cross and follow Christ. He guides, he directs. What shall I say? I'll put my words in your mouth. Sometimes a phrase can be significant. Years ago, I was in Berlin. My son was having an art showing in that city, lived in Geneva, and we went to a, 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 it was kind of an October fest, you know, where they celebrate life and bread and sausages and they turn the beer into water and it's wonderful. <laughs> and I, 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 I'd eaten so much, it was wonderful food. It was wonderful. <laughs> And I, I, and I just, as I'm standing there, this guy comes along and, and I hear his accent, he's English. And the Lord gave me a word for him. We had a little repartee and he began to weep in the midst of a crowded, restaurant. A man's life was touched. It was just a little prophetic word. I, I, and it was so powerful. God's love touched the life of a man. We can be that person. Oh, I pray to God with all of my heart that will happen. In closing, I want us to pray this prayer. If you can't pray or you feel uncomfortable, it's okay. You just allow us to be able to do that. But 
This is the prayer I, I just wrote, very, very brief. Lord, conquer my heart. Conquer my heart with your love, so that I might love you and others wholeheartedly. Would you like to do Let's stand together, shall we? And if you just follow this prayer responsibly, let's declare it out loud. Lord, conquer my heart. Lord, conquer my heart. With your love. With your love. So that I might love you. So that I might love you. That I might love others wholeheartedly. Now we're going to say it one more time, a little more passionately. Lord, conquer my heart with your love, with your love, so that I might love you, so that I might love you and others and others more powerfully. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just as we stand in the presence of the Lord, I'm going to pray that the Lord would impart fresh love to you. Where there's been wounding, let there be healing. Where there's been misunderstanding, let there be reconciliation. Where there's a feeling of inadequacy, let the hand of the Lord be upon you. Remember the past is behind you. Today is fresh. It's a new beginning. Don't say you can't when God says you can. And you say that what I have in my hand is little. And God says little is much if I am in it. I just pray that the Lord bring healing to your heart and life. And those times when your mind races and you're seeking resolution. God says, I will give you wisdom, I'll give you insight so that my peace will be part of your inheritance. Does that mean something to you? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Lord, I just pray in Jesus. I just pray in Jesus' name. Let me do this. I just. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your power and grace. Lord, you're a God of new beginnings. And Lord, I pray that each one of us will allow you access into our hearts so that the old might be displaced with the new, that your love would flow like a river and that would impact those around us and in our homes where there's been misunderstanding or misrepresentation, I just pray the peace of God and the love of God and the fullness of God's love be your servant's portion in Jesus' name. How many say, I just need a fresh impartation of the love of God? Lord Jesus, as our hands reach towards heaven, God, I pray, God, I pray that there be a fresh flow of, of your love in this house. I thank you, Lord, for, 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 um, for Grant and for Linda, Lord, that have lab labored and served here in this place. But I pray there'll be, there'll be a refreshing flow of the love of God which passeth all understanding that the outreach of this church will be to this community in new ways and that they'll be known as a church that loves people encourages people because the impact of your love in Jesus name Amen Blessed be the Lord Blessed be the Lord Let's worship the Lord in Jesus name Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.